Well, welcome to another episode of Make Your Mind Your Best Ally. And today I have my friend and uh, guest, Dr. Caitlin Prickett, and myself, Martha Garzon, I'm a former professional player. So I would like you to introduce yourself, Caitlin. Sure. Um, I'm Dr. Caitlin Prickett, and I'm a board certified internal medicine physician. I'm also the owner of Concierge Medicine at Boca Raton. Awesome. So the reason why I wanted to speak to you today is because there's something really hot out there now that is called cold plunging. Yes. And I, uh, I know there are a lot of benefits, physical benefits, you know, for cold plunging. But today I wanted to just hone in to the mental benefits of cold plunging. It's not easy to do. And no, it's done. not. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead and tell me? Yes. Yeah. Cold plunging, also known as a deliberate cold exposure, it is the latest and greatest in wellness right now. And there are so many physical and mental yeah. benefits. So mental benefits include numerous things. It helps decrease stress. It helps to improve resilience. Okay. So the ability to overcome challenges it helps to really help with anxiety, depression, and it's really great to add into an overall mm -hmm. wellness plan. Yeah, I would say. I, and I'm really interested in the resilience um, and the, the strength because we, we need that, especially when your mind goes everywhere where it's not supposed to be playing. Yes. Um, so... Let's talk about resilience a little bit. Um, can we talk about some of the hormones? Um, I, I would like to hear some of the medical explanations of, of the, the hormones that get activated and how, how do they, what do they do to our bodies? Definitely. So there's a lot going on when you first expose yourself to cold water. During the first 30 to 60 seconds, when you get into a cold ice bath, your body goes into this fight or flight response, which is your sympathetic nervous system. Okay. That is the system in our body that basically tells us to get out, there's danger, run away. So when you're in an ice bath, of course, you're not getting out in the first yeah. 30 seconds. And so your body releases the epinephrine and norepinephrine hormones. Okay. Epinephrine is also known as adrenaline. Ah, so if you hear okay. people talk about adrenaline, that's the same thing as epinephrine. Okay, okay. Something that's also released is dopamine, mm. which is that chemical that gives us happy feelings. Mm, okay, the and happy hormones. Exactly, the happy <laughs> hormones. It said that cold water immersion increases your dopamine up to 250%. Wow. Yes. Oh, my God. So that's what's going on when you first get into the cold plunge. Now, after about 60 seconds, and also during this time, your heart rate is up because the epinephrine, mm -hmm. again, it's like, get out, run, run, go away. <laughs> yeah, this is too cold. Why are you so, doing this to exactly. me? Exactly. And so your heart rate's up temporarily. Okay. Your blood pressure is up temporarily. But okay. after about 60 seconds, your body relaxes and your parasympathetic response starts to come in. That's more of the rest and digest. So uh -huh. the blood pressure comes back down, the heart rate comes back down, and you're in a state of almost relaxation in a sense. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've noticed that. Yes. It, it was, I, I've, I've been doing it as well, and it wasn't easy in the beginning. Um, you know, unfortunately, I started way too cold. And I was like, <laughs> yes. what am I doing? So that's another thing I wanted to ask you. Um, yes. If someone wanted to get into it, what would you recommend? Yes. So start low and slow. So first of all, please, of course, I'm internal medicine physician. I'm primary care. So yeah. I must tell you this. If you're thinking about any sort of cold immersion therapy, make sure to check with your physician first mm -hmm. because it's not for everyone. Of course, most people can can do it. But those with a lot of heart conditions like arrhythmias or oh. heart failure, or even uncontrolled blood pressure, shouldn't really do it at first. You really oh, need well. to consult your physician. Okay. Because think about when you're getting into the cold water, your heart rate is going up. That's true. So you do become what we call tachycardic, or your blood oh. pressure goes up, hypertensive. Oh, okay. Even though these are transient things, and even though over time doing cold water immersion, your blood pressure is better, your heart rate is better over time. And I can objectively tell you later yeah. about my own personal experience with okay. that. But Initially, if you do have uncontrolled heart conditions, you really should speak with your physician first. Wow. Yeah, that's so you know, I so must I must start good. with that. <laughs> I am so glad that you said that because, yes. you know, some of us and I'll put myself in that group sometimes we're just like, you know, hey, this is this is something new and let's try it. And who yeah. cares about what I might or might not have? 
Exactly. So, and it's always important, of course, you should be going to your primary care physician annually for your physicals, mm -hmm. making sure your blood pressure and heart rate are good. Yep. And then after that, um, getting started, once you have the clearance from your physician, you mm -hmm. want to start at a higher temperature and for a short amount of time. So the okay. studies have shown that 11 minutes total throughout the week oh, is I see. all not you the, need. Not, like not 11 minutes whole, at a time, uh, okay. but 11 minutes throughout the week is all you need at a minimum to get the the, the responses and benefits ah, from okay. the cold so water. So that probably be like, what, three days, three minutes each? Kind yes. Of, four and minutes so each. what... Um, what I started out with doing okay. is, and I started very elementary. I got <laughs> a, an inflatable tub from yep. Amazon. That's what and I got And we went to Publix and got ice. ice. Yeah, yeah. It, gets, <laughs> it gets annoying. Days, yes. We put in about nine or 10 bags of yeah. ice in this big wow. tub. Wow. Okay. Yes. And our water temperature got down to about 59 degrees. Okay. Which is actually pretty cold. You can't really get your cold faucet to get down that oh my low. God, yeah. So 59, even though it doesn't sound cold, it's cold yep. in water. Mm -hmm. And so we started there, and um, I did about one minute to start out with. Okay. So give yourself time to build up endurance, mm -hmm. to actually get used to submerging yourself in the water, get your protocol down, because you want your shoulders immersed. You want to be submerged up to okay. the neck. Okay. Okay. Up right. to the neck. And with your feet, hands, and everything in, because mm -hmm. you really you want the core to be exposed uh -huh. to the cold. Here we're talking the heart mind exactly. primarily. Yes. Okay. And so usually I go where the water is above my shoulders. And okay. So you start slow there and then work yourself up. So I've been doing this for a few months now mm -hmm. and I'm now at 45 degrees Fahrenheit wow. for my temperature oh. and I'm staying for four minutes. Oh my God, you and are my hero. <laughs> I'm able to do that. It's not comfortable, yeah. and but I am able to tolerate it. My body is responding well to it. Yeah. So I would say, you know, start slow, start just right below 60 degrees just for one minute and then work okay. yourself up from there. Okay. Again, you are, you're going with your own personal uh, goals. Right. You're not going to have the same goals as somebody else. Yeah. And so you want to just slowly build up. Mm -hmm. And would you recommend... To have someone with you there in case, like, you know, something happens? Yes, it is, especially for the first couple of weeks while you're okay. getting used to it. You want to have a partner, a buddy, a friend who can all actually do it with you mm. and be a source of encouragement and yeah. um, help keep you accountable, too. But just to make sure, yes, that nothing goes wrong, because it is a shock. Yeah. It is a shock when you get into the cold water and your body, get, again, that sympathetic yeah. nervous system is saying, get out. And so having somebody there, make sure that you're safe. Mm. And if something happens, of course, you have a partner there who can help you. So going back to the beginning, when you first get shocked, if you were there with your husband or uh, your significant other, um, what would you tell that person? If you were trying to coach them to, you know, to let them look, whatever you're feeling, it's, it's not true. You're not going to die. Right. Um, I mean, granted. You've gone to the, your physician and everything is okay. Yes. You're not having a heart attack <laughs> and stuff. What would you say to that person what, uh, like mentally? Yes. And you just have to tell them to encourage them to stay with it. Okay. That the first 30 to 60 seconds is the worst. Um, their heart rate is up. They're shivering. It feels like thousands of mm -hmm. needles are touching their skin. All of this sounds bad, yeah. but I promise you. <laughs> no. It's, it's no it, it does get better. It does it's get not, easier. It's not. So, but yeah, just encourage them to stay in it and breathe. So breathing is so important. Thing. There is a, if you have pro Googled cold water therapy yeah. or cold plunges, you probably heard of Wim Hof. He yep. is yeah. an expert in, in cold plunges and cold exposure therapy. And he has a breathing technique that okay. you can do. I personally just take deep breaths uh -huh. in and out, like slow breaths, like two seconds in and then release. Mm -hmm. Because once you get, again, past that 60 seconds, you will relax. But the first 60, just stay in it. Stay yeah. with it. Yeah, and I, I can testify to that. It, it does get easier. And once you're there, you're like, oh, my God, this is actually, you know, nicer. And when you get out. So let's talk about the short-term and long-term benefits. What would you say? So short-term, as you probably experienced doing it yourself, huh. and what I've definitely experienced is you feel a sense of energy. You feel so ready to tackle the day True. after yeah. you do a, a cold plunge, and that's due to the dopamine, again, that happy hormone okay. that's increased in your body, again, up to 250%. 
And so you feel ready to conquer the day. I see it as my first accomplishment of the day. Oh, and, that's so I do so it in the morning. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I, I, I you know, I drink coffee. Uh-huh. Um, you know, I exercise. I do all the things that we're supposed to do for health and wellness. But I don't get that dopamine release mm-hmm. with anything else like the cold plunge. Yeah. The cold plunge, so it, you just feel so energized. Yep. Like your your battery's just been filled up to the top. Mm-hmm. And so, and you're ready again to tackle the day. The, again, through that, you're going to mm-hmm. help with stress. Um, so I find that yeah. I'm able to handle little challenges throughout the day a little bit better. Things that used to stress me out really don't. Uh-huh. And that comes from I'm more relaxed because of the cold yeah. plunge. I've already conquered the cold plunge for the day. So I've already True. done my huge <laughs> challenge, my huge hurdle. Everything is is like no big deal. Exactly. <laughs> so exactly. So I, I look at things a little more calm uh-huh. throughout the day. Now, long-term benefits. Yep. And I can objectively, so I'm a physician. And of course, with that, I'm a scientist too. And I love yeah. numbers. I love data. I love looking at things objectively. So mm-hmm. subjectively, I feel well. Mm-hmm. I have more energy. I'm more calm. Okay. Uh, my stamina when I work out is better, but my numbers, my resting heart rate before I started this a few months ago was 64, which is a pretty good resting heart rate. That's Yeah, that's very good. And I wear a Whoop, which is a fitness tracker, so okay. it tracks my heart rate at, at all times. Do you wear it when you're in the cold? I do, because really? it's waterproof. Okay. Yeah, and you can actually see your heart rate increase and then drop. Oh my God, that's crazy. Okay. It's actually pretty remarkable. And so I've noticed over the past few months, and I checked my resting heart rate today, and my average resting heart rate now is 60. So it went from 64 to 60 wow. in three months just doing cold plunge. It's the only thing I've done differently. That's unbelievable. And so the numbers, I mean, the the numbers don't lie. Mm-hmm. And so I'm sure if I check my blood pressure, it would be lower as lower. well. So long-term wow. benefits. So it's going to help with your blood pressure and heart rate. Mm-hmm. It's going to help activate the brown adipose tissue. Yeah. So brown fat is mitochondria rich and mitochondria are like the powerhouse of our cells. Okay. And so the brown fat, when activated, helps to increase your metabolism, helps to okay. improve your body's insulin sensitivity, helps to decrease blood sugar. Mm-hmm. And so the activating that brown fat, which is so hard to do with any other yeah. exercise. Yes, I I've heard. <laughs> it is. And so in the brown fat, again, it as you continue to do more cold plunges, you activate this more and you're really going to have that long-term benefit. So they're doing studies now mm-hmm. with diabetics showing, is this yeah. a way we can help patients with their blood sugar or mm. even help to prevent diabetes okay. in the future for patients? So, wow. And it's not only for inflammation, um, with the a- activating the adipose tissue and helping you know, decrease inflammation, it helps with your immune system. So it's mm-hmm. boosting up those white blood cells, oh, boosting up wow. your interleukins, which are your part of your molecules yeah. for the immune system. So there's right. so many benefits to it. Huh. Wow. Incredible. We could talk all day about it. We this. could. <laughs> yes. Um, so uh, let's talk about timing, when to do it. Um, I would say you wouldn't want to do it before a tennis match, right? Because your muscles are going to be constricted and you, you want to be warmed up, right? But maybe the night before? Yes. So you... definitely, so not right before a tennis match yeah. because it does take your body time to warm up. Mm-hmm. So after I do my cold plunge, I actually get in a cold shower. So instead of a warm shower, oh, so I don't okay. speed up my warming too quickly because you want your body to naturally warm up mm-hmm. to get the maximum benefit. If you were to do it the night before, that would probably be better. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't do it right before the cold, right before the match. Yeah, no. Yeah, you, but would it wake you up if you do it at night? See, that's the thing. It probably, because your sympathetic nervous system is activated, that okay. fight or flight, it may keep you up. So if you got up early before a match, say your match wasn't until 9 o'clock, maybe getting up at 6 o'clock and doing it, uh-huh. so you have your body, okay. your body has time to warm up naturally, might be a good way to do it. Okay. And really, when you're starting this, figure out what works best for you. Mm-hmm. If doing it in the morning is better, do that. And maybe do it on days when you don't have a match, when you're just right. having practices. Or try it maybe an hour after your match. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah. Not right after. Definitely. Because right after, you're going to inhibit your body's own response to your muscles working. You're going to inhibit, oh. like, your muscle hypertrophy. You're going to inhibit those good things that happen after exercise. Uh-huh. So you okay. don't want to dampen that from mm-hmm. exercise. You mm-hmm. want to wait at least an hour. Wow. I didn't know that. That's, yes. That's good to know because I would, you know, people 
put ice right away after, you know, they're, they're playing if they have an injury, but I guess cold plunging would be way different than that. Yes. Yeah, so you want to give your body time to respond to all those healthy things that are happening with the exercise. Mm-hmm. You don't, because when you exercise or you're playing tennis, there is some stress when yeah. you're doing that. You're putting your body under some sort of stress, good stress. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to dampen that again with immersing yourself into cold water. So would you say that one of the long-term benefits would be helping us make decisions a lot quicker? Because yes. like we're, we're in the middle of a point and we're trying to concentrate and, you know, not get so nervous and not let the stress levels go up. Because that, that's one of the things that I personally struggle with. You know, your adrenaline gets so high and you're like, oh, my God, this is the end of the world when it's not. It's just a sport, right? Yes. <laughs> So I would say, you know, eventually um, you would be able to be calmer making decisions. Definitely, because you're putting yourself in that high stress situation every time you cold plunge. Ah, Every time you cold plunge is that high stress situation. So you learn how to mentally adapt to that. You learn with your breaths or with your mind that you are going to be able to overcome this. Uh Again, focusing on that resiliency, overcoming the barriers, overcoming difficulties. And so I found, I ride my bike a few days a week. I found that my stamina and mental agility has gone up since cold plunging. Like going up a hill with riding my bike, I'd be like, oh gosh, I want to stop. But uh-huh. now I'm like, no, keep going. You've ice plunged uh-huh. this morning. Yeah, you, know, right. <laughs> you can make it through. Uh-huh. And so it really does help with those s- mental situations that mm-hmm. are stressful in our everyday lives. Okay, that's cool. It's a good mental exercise. So there's another um, thing out there that's called, um, uh, what's the one that I'm looking for that has the vapor, the cold? The cryotherapy. Cryotherapy, yeah. Yes. What's the difference between the two? That's a great question. Okay. Um, they're not the same. They're not the same. So cryotherapy is basically using liquid nitrogen to cool down air. You're in a chamber and Mm -hmm. your head's out, but it's cooling the air around you. And actually gets colder than what a cold plunge gets. But Uh what it doesn't do is it doesn't get deep into your tissues. It's Uh really only cooling the surface. Mm -hmm. And so it's really not analogous or the same as doing the cold plunges. Okay. Because the cold plunging, you're immersed, you're immersing yourself into the water Mm -hmm. and it actually gets deep into those tissues because it's the water that's surrounding you, not the air. Plus you don't get that mental uh, resilience activity with the cryotherapy as you do in the cold water immersion. Mm -hmm. Plus, not to mention, uh, the cryo chambers are typically at these centers, like wellness centers or companies or businesses where you have to wait until they're open. You have Mm -hmm. to go and pay money. And it takes a lot longer to do as opposed to doing a cold plunge at home. Yeah, I mean, because cold plunges can be as easy as putting ice in your bathtub. That's how I started, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, we put a little too much ice, but yeah. <laughs> and so it's much more convenient to do it too. Plus okay. the benefits, they've actually done research on this. The benefits of cold plunging mm-hmm. outweighs the benefits of the cryotherapy. That's unbelievable. So tell me about your own experience. You, you said you started with a small um, inflatable top and then you progress into something different. Yes, we actually. So I started cold plunging because I was reading about all the benefits yeah. of it, both for health and wellness. And I wanted, I'm always with my concierge practice, talking with patients about lifestyle and wellness mm-hmm. and things we can incorporate to keep them as healthy and well as possible. Yeah. And so we did get the, from Amazon, the inflatable tub mm-hmm. with the ice. And we did that for a couple of months. And then we invested yeah. in an actual tub. And so the tub is like a nice ceramic tub that's outside. I've seen them and it's pretty tall, isn't yes, it? Yes, yeah. it is. And you set the temperature on it and it has filters and everything to keep the water clean. So you can actually set the temperature to a specific uh, number mm-hmm. that you want to use. That's why I know my temperature is 45 degrees okay, that's in my perfect. plunge. Yeah. And it keeps the water circulating. Because if you think if you're getting in the ice bath, you kind of have to move your arms around. Because okay. your body will heat up the surrounding water. So if you don't have continuous movement of oh, the water, yeah, noticed, you'll get a little warm. You have a tendency to <laughs> exactly. bring your limbs together. Exactly. So the actual plunge, which it was an investment for us, but I use it every day. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen the benefits both subjectively and objectively. I so agree. I believe in it 100%. So that was my transition. So I always recommend maybe start with ice in the yeah. bathtub or get the inflatable tub from Amazon. Mm-hmm. 
and yeah. kind of work your way up from there. Make sure that it's something you're going to incorporate. That's what I was going to say. You know, it, it is pretty expensive, the investment and in that, but it, if you're doing something every day and if you're seeing the benefits, you know what? It's, it's something that's going to be good for you. So it's good for your health. Definitely. Right? It's definitely worth the investment because we were spending a lot of money on yeah. ice. And think about the time, time we were going every oh other day to get ice. And of course, <laughs> yeah, you know, you go to the same place to get ice, you know, a few times a week and people will ask you, why are you getting the ice? <laughs> What's going on? How many parties are you throwing exactly, there? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I would get comments every single time. And so now huh. I just wake up every morning and I go outside and I plunge yeah. for my four minutes and I'm ready as opposed to getting the ice out and getting the tub ready and all mm -hmm. that. So cool. it's so that's my progression. And I will stick with it because I feel yeah, so much better. I, I agree. So you have a, a video that you posted. Uh, I saw it on Instagram. And yes. I'm going to I'm going to put a link to the uh, description in the description of this video to that video, because it was it's interesting how you explain how you're getting in. And, you know, like, like I was in the beginning, I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. Yes. You know, do I just throw myself in and do I what do I think? So um, just look for it in the description. Um, and so the last thing I wanted to, to mention, you have a practice in Boca. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's a concierge medical practice. And concierge basically means that patients pay an annual membership mm -hmm. fee and they get unlimited appointments with me. They get access to me 24-7. They can come in as often as they want to or need to. Mm -hmm. And we spend time with one another. And that's the big thing yeah. is my average appointment time is one hour. It's wow. not quick in, quick out. We're actually able to sit down comfortably and talk like you and I are that's talking so nice. now yeah. and really talk about what is concerning them about their health. Mm -hmm. What are their health goals? Lifestyle. Lifestyle is so important and something that is not discussed a lot mm -hmm. in medicine. Yeah. There's so much we can do in our everyday lives, like cold plunging. Preventive medicine. Yes. Is and I, yes, and I focus into. a lot on wellness, prevention, early detection. And so I incorporate a lot of different tools into my practice. Like we're doing whole body MRIs now. That's unbelievable. Yes. Wow. We're scanning you from head to toe. And of course, as a primary care physician, I'm doing your annual physical. We're talking about your family history That's and incredible. seeing what genetically you're predisposed yeah. for so we can take action now mm -hmm. to try to either prevent disease or if we can't prevent it, early detect it at yeah. least. Because it's much easier to treat disease mm -hmm. when you find it early as opposed to when it's progressed later on and our options are limited. So I love what I do. I I'm able tell. to really get <laughs> to know tell. patients and and we develop such good relationships uh -huh. because we are able to sit and talk yeah. and they don't feel rushed. There's never a crowded waiting room. You're seen at your appointment yeah. time. And I do everything in my office, draw blood, EKGs. Yeah. We run you know, urine tests. It's a lot that we do here. I have an in-house pharmacy. Mm -hmm. oh. So patients come and they can get everything done at one place that's and great. have a nice office to go to. My office is not like your typical medical yeah. practice is very contemporary and welcoming because I really do consider it mm -hmm. a patient's medical home. And I am their partner in health yeah. through all this. I've, I've been there and I, I do feel how there's a lot of empathy coming from you guys. And, and it makes you feel safe. It makes you feel comfortable at home. Like you said, you're not rushed. You're not a number. Exactly. Um, and that's, you know, it is a an amazing example to to follow for other people but thank you anyway so thank you so much for sharing all this knowledge and all these amazing tips uh with me and everybody that's out there yes. and uh as always please if you have any questions anything that you would like us to talk about um you know make a comment and i would love to you know find the answer for you and caitlin again thank you so much for coming and uh we'll be talking soon hopefully Yes, okay. this is fun. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.